Right, right, let's do the introductions. So, I'm sitting here with... Uh, John Bowden. John Bowden from... Yes, from uh, Bellahead. Uh, Bellahead, yeah. yeah. And um, this is the Bellahead set, which has been on tour for the last, what, two weeks? Uh, yeah, yeah, but yes, yeah, nearly. Not quite. Yes. Nearly yes. been on quite. Nearly been on quite. And, um, end of the tour. Yeah. Interesting place to end the tour. Was that a, was that a conscious decision, or uh, did that come about? I think it was because we were, we were over in Europe and it sort of makes sense to do a UK gig on the way back in, you yeah. know, so we, we came over on the ferry last night and, uh, yeah. I, I do like, um, you know, exploring a town when we, when we arrive somewhere, uh, particularly if we're on a tour bus we wake up in the town, so we've basically got a whole day to, uh, to kill kind of thing. So, um, uh, so, but no, I didn't really, uh, I wouldn't say I have any preconceptions about Croydon. I have been here before a couple of times, but, um, but I've had a nice little wander around, so the gardens over the road, and, uh, you know, uh, so yeah, yeah, it's, it's fun. I quite, you know, I quite enjoy wandering around the town. Let's just talk about the band a little bit. Just, I mean, just a little bit, because obviously they're kind of, that's sort of why you're here. Yeah. The album is the clearly the big thing at the moment. Yeah. We've just had the award. What is it? Do you think that makes it such a standout album? Uh, I think it's um, it's a very uh, coherent album, uh, and that that that's um, kind of luck, really. I mean, we, you know, it's sort of um, it, the material came from all sorts of sources, and we didn't have a plan for it, but uh, um, it just kind of when it all got there, it all just kind of gelled really well, all the tracks kind of gelled and the sounds gelled really well. A lot of that is just John Leckie, the producer, um, who's, um, you know, got, who had an overview of it and, 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 uh, and, and I guess was, was pushing us in those directions. But uh, So I think, yeah, it's very coherent. It's quite, um, uh, it's quite a raucous album. It's quite a, um, it's quite, there are quite a lot of choruses in it, which is nice. It's, 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 um, it's, it's not always as easy as you would think to find folk songs with uh, big, <laughs> big choruses. So, um, yeah, I think we, we um, pulled a few uh, good choruses out of the bag for this one, which was nice. And is that, I, mean, I suppose that helps with the whole kind of party sing-along yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. it does. Um, and it's also, I think, good for... Um, I mean, we've been very lucky to get quite a lot of radio play um, for a couple of tracks on this album. And I think when you've got a catchy chorus, a, it means you're more likely to get the radio play, but B, it means that when people hear it a few times, it kind of sticks in their head, and then I think that translates into people then wanting to find out more, hopefully. So, <coughs> so top tip, kids, if you're writing songs, write them with catchy sort of choruses. Yeah, it's, um, it's uh, yeah. Uh, it's uh, oh, obvious, it's lost but, uh, it's lost <laughs> <laughs> obvious but true. Let me just switch that off. Um, Another question I was going to ask about the album and about just the whole process of working with such a big band because I mean you know you're almost beyond a band I mean you're almost a folk orchestra I mean there's so many of you um, how does the creative process work is it, is, it, is it driven by just a few of you is it more of a collective thing how does it, how does it, how does it go on well we, we tend to the way we work um, because there's so many of us and we we rehearse all, all 11 of us so um, generally speaking people need to come to, uh, with a pretty clear idea of a track um, before we start, so if, so generally falls to whoever has the original idea for a new track to, to, to really flesh it out in quite a coherent way and then bring it to the band and then the band plays it and, and works on it and kind of, um, you know, pulls it about a bit and, and makes it sort of uh, uh, a bit more organic. It's quite a scary thing actually, presenting material to, I mean not just, just any, any band, it's kind of uh, a bit uh, nerve-wracking. But, um, but yeah, no, it's um, so yeah, so the, a variety of people come up with ideas and it's whatever, whatever works. You know. so the, the other thing about a big band, and I've, I've always wondered about this, is how easy is it to hold them all together? Because if, when, you, when you're talking about even just three or four guys, you know, sometimes they can splinter off in all sorts of different directions. Mm. Holding that number of people together for the length of time you have, is, is that. Do you mean oh, holding them together? Oh, as a band, do you yeah, mean? Yeah, um, it's been a bit of a two-year but Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think in terms of um, people falling out with each other and that sort of side, which is actually how most bands split up, isn't it? People tend to fall out with each other. In a way, it's easier having eleven piece because it's pretty intense when you're in a when you're touring with four people or okay. whatever. Yeah. That, that it's actually you, yeah, you kind of all you spend all day with each other and you're you know you're driving in a, a little car, maybe depending on what you know. Obviously, not if you're a massive 
you know, if you're the Claxons or something, but you know, but, you know, it's sort of, um, you know, uh, certainly on the folk scene, if you're in a four piece, you're all kind of there doing it together, and, and I think it's very easy to get um, kind of frustrated with each other and, and, and that sort of stuff when, you, when you're just in, just in that real close unit, whereas actually with 11 or indeed 16, we're a 16 uh, touring, you know, that's we tour 16 uh, of us. Um, at the moment, and and it just means it's more like um, I don't know, hanging out in a in a uh, you know bar or something. You know, it's just you know. I thought you were about to say the Waltons. Yeah, uh, that, that as well. I mean, there are various things that it's like. It's a but family. It's, it's a big it's, extended it's family. Bigger, but it, but it's not. Um, there's no way that all 16 of us are going to be kind of you know. All should we right off to, off. Let's all go and eat together now, and let's yeah, all have yeah. breakfast together, and let's uh, you know. So actually. Um, if you fall down with one, one person, you can kind of hang out with someone Yeah, else. exactly. Yeah. And, and it just, I think it kind of diffuses a lot of, you know, because it's quite, quite, quite a lot of boredom on tour. And so I think, and, and just being in a band, there are lots of frustrations or whatever. So I think um, it diffuses it, having that number of people actually diffuses anything like that that's band come up, you know. Something that strikes me though is that just the financials of it. I mean, just making a band work financially because there's not that many people in it. I mean, it, it, it speaks for your success, really. You, you know, you, you, you can't hold that many people together if you're not bring, bringing in, you know, enough yeah. money to make it work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we were. I mean, I guess it was. Um to start a band like that is, is we were lucky in that um, John and I had, um, were, were at a point in our career as a duo, um, and also we had enough goodwill from the folk sort of industry that we were able to put a band like that together and be and pay everyone, you know, not not huge amounts of money, but you know, we all everyone has always been paid being in the band and, that, and that's what's difficult I think when you start start from scratch. You mentioned the levelers earlier on. Yeah. Um, I, I, I mean you, you cut your teeth in the festival circuit. Mm. Has there ever been any discussion amongst any of you about going in the direction they've gone and, and creating your own event? I mean you curated the, uh, the South Bank right, thing. Right, right, yeah, Have you yeah. ever thought about taking that into a field? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we'd love to but um, we've never it sounds like also a bit of a nightmare, really. <laughs> so we'd love to, but we're just not quite organised enough to uh, do that. But not just, you know, the the, the, the levels are, you know, highly uh, studious and, and organised. I'm sure. And I'll they, tell. I'll tell know, them. I'm, I'm sure they yeah. sit around, uh, you know, with spreadsheets and uh, <laughs> I'm just sitting there. No, I think um, they they they've got a lot of good people working for them. We, we make it happen. We. we um, uh, have a lot of good people working for us, but not people who, who are at this point in time in position to set up a festival for us. But we would certainly like to have a go at it at some point. I mean, there's 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 two sides to it. One is it would be nice to just put a good big fun show on. The other thing is that um, I guess the, the the folkies in the band are all quite. You know, we we, we also would, uh, you know we're part of the education side of folk music, and so it'd be nice to do something with with that. That aspect to it. So, anyway, but the other problem is that, of course, there are 11 different ideas of what kind of festival <laughs> we might want to run. You have a stage each. That's all right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, uh, there are no, no, there are no um, actual plans to do it, but it is certainly something we've talked about. And just, I mean, suppose rounding off on folk. What is it that, that seems to be increasingly making folk cool again? Um, I don't know. I don't know if it's about being cool. To be honest, I think it's about um, it's it's such a kind of fundamental thing that music should be a part of your life, um, not just as a consumer but as a participant. And I think that folk music is um, you know that's where it comes from. Is that is that you know need to be uh, uh, to have a kind of um, you know, sort of communal experience of music, and that's that's where it comes from. And I think that's its great strength still is that it, uh, that once you get into folk music, you you actually become a participant of it very very quickly. And I think it it's not that it um, is getting kind of cool in a sort of inflated way. I think it was just un naturally uncool <laughs> for um, basically for a decade or so um, after the punk thing happened. It became, it became very uncool to be in folk music, and I think that was the blip. You know, I think we've just kind of come out of that blip, and now, and it's—I don't think it's going to go like. You know, there, there is a kind of, uh, 
you know, it's amazing. Well, like Mumford or something, this thing is amazing, but it's not. That's that's not really the folk music that, 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 that I'm talking about. And I think the folk music that we're all a part of it. Hopefully, it's just back and it's just going to stay there. And we don't need it to go any. It doesn't need to set off any more fireworks than it's already setting necessarily. If it does, it does. But um, I suppose the worry is that you end up where you were in, in the late seventies, where it sort of you know, it becomes so mainstream that then there's this sort of inev inevitable crash. Um, and and, uh, and it, I don't know, I personally feel that we're in quite a comfortable place where where it's just kind of naturally part of the scene in the way classical music is just naturally part of the music scene and no one is like, oh, you know, is it, um, is it the next, you know, uh, are we going to get a classical number one album? Are we gonna, you know, it doesn't, nobody care. It's just music and people are happy that it's there and just don't want it don't want to kill it off, but don't necessarily need to, uh, yeah, stick it, stick it in a big um, box and parade it around the streets. Really. That's so, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's basically been here for hundreds of years. Hundreds of years. Yeah. It's going to be hundred years more. Yeah. yeah. And it, I mean, it is a, it's a historic music, so it's not, you know, the whole thing of it, what is real folk music is, is Hey Jude, more of a folk song than um, uh, One May Morning Early or whatever. Is is a different kind of debate because. That's just about the use of the word ter uh, the, the term folk. But in terms of the music we play, which is old folk music, it's folk, folk, folk music that's generally 150 years old. So it's not going to become more relevant, but it's not going to become less relevant either. It's just as relevant as it is always going to be. And that's quite a nice position to be in because actually, when you, I don't know, um, it's much easier to become obsolete if you're trying to be current. Just, I mean, just one last thing, I suppose, looking out there, lots of seats. Does, does, does lots of seats work for your fans? Because I thought they were a bit kind of, you know, get up and swing around. Well, we prefer a stand-up gig and, and a lot of our fans prefer a stand-up gig, but a lot of people don't like stand-up gigs. Um, I mean, I actually say, as an audience member, I, I, I'd probably rather sit down for the gig, do you know what I mean? But not always, but... Um, so it's kind of horses, of course, and what's been really nice on this tour is that Generally speaking, the last three or four numbers, everyone stood up anyway, and so you get that sense of release yeah. because because it happens. Where, a gig where people don't stand up at all is kind of weird. For us. Right. Well, I think that'll do us. Um, we're going to leave the lovely uh, Croydon stage now for Indeed, um, yeah. you guys later on. Um, it's going to be a lot better in five years' time. We're going to spend twenty five million on this place. Yeah. yeah. I think it needs it. It's going to be tired on the edges. <laughs> Yeah, well, I don't know, it's, it's, this bit's lovely, backstage, you know, my, my jacuzzi in my dressing room is really, you know, substandard, <laughs> so, and, I think uh, you may find that that's just where they've left the drain cover open. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be, yeah.